if all three of us could pick up our first car, like we were 16 years old right now with everything we know in today's day and age, what first car would we get? I got it. Okay, what do you got? Segway Super Scooter GT2. <laughs> I think I would genuinely go and spend a very long time looking for a clean Mark IV GTI. I would honestly probably say like an Acura RSX. Ooh. That's a good one. Welcome back to the Martini Works podcast. We are back for season 69 and nice. it is 420 in the afternoon. We're excited to be Ooh. here and we hope you are yeah. too. Hey, you know, speaking of 420. <laughs> yeah. I don't think the new can. Nissan Z <laughs> Nismo makes 420 horsepower. Wow. That you know, I would like to just put take my hat off that I don't have right now and say that was a really good segue. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. That was good. Because I had my own. Yeah. And then you you got it. Yeah. All right. That's good. I yeah, like it's it. It's all natural. By the way, thank you guys and gals for saying that you tune in every single Friday to, to watch the podcast. I got to say, those comments, very wholesome. Yeah, they make me so happy when someone's like, dude, I'm on my way to work. The podcast just dropped. I'm <laughs> stoked. Like, that yeah. is my favorite shit ever because uh, it feels like we're hanging out with you guys, which yeah. is cool. So that way I don't have to just hang out with Alex all the time and Joe. Oh, Jones. my gosh. Yeah. First, they get old quick. <laughs> <laughs> I am old. No, it, it is cool. So thank you so much for, for the comments. And uh, just so you know, I would like to give a shout out. Um, the, store is, the store is working with your make model filters now. To everybody that's like added your build threads and has Dude, sent us some feedback. Stuck with us. First much sale. Much appreciated. First sale. I want a dollar framed. Alex won't fucking do it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was so sick. I'm pretty sure, like, after shipping and stuff, we're gonna have like $13 That's left. Perfect. But we're well, still, so we'll have 12. But, <laughs> we're still good. But no, let's go, let's go back to the, the Nismo. Yes, the new Nit. Did I say Nismo? What did I say? Nismo. Nismo Z. I, I don't know how I don't you pronounce know. it, but yes, yeah, so Nissan announced that they're dropping the new Nismo right after Alex got yeah, his. How pissed are you? <laughs> Bro, it, well, okay. are this, you pissed though? Because no, that's no, no, the thing. No, no, no. Yeah. So hear, hear me out here. If this was 2019, I'd probably be a little upset about it. Sure. I'd be like, bro, come on. I just got my car finally after waiting, you know, two years. Yeah. You know, blah, 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 blah. I can relate to this story. In but the in, in 2020, <laughs> it's like the opposite. In, in 2023, new car releases to me are a little bit like they're like magic. I don't know. They're not really uh, real. I'm not convinced yeah. the car actually exists. No, it doesn't because it's like, oh, Cool new car. Can't wait to finally no, maybe I see it in five years. TJ Hunt, it's Dustin gonna... Williams will have one <laughs> in three. And weeks. that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw Chris Forsberg did a, a video on it, and then a couple of the guys that worked with him on the right, Nismo Z Tom, commercial, mm -hmm. uh, Larry Chen, and those yep. guys. And they obviously they posted all their stuff. Brian from Top Rank mm -hmm. was was at the debut, and it's like they're all excited about it. It is cool. Like I do like that Nissan is dropping a Nismo Z. I think that's awesome. Makes sense. You know, but for like the, the NPCs of the world, a.k.a. us, it's like we're never going to see that car. No. Okay. It's never, never coming. I think for people listening, if they haven't got a chance to listen or check it out, we should talk a little bit about what's different about the Nismo sure. and why it's a big deal and maybe why a lot of people are ex extremely upset about it. Let's talk because, about the good stuff first, though. Okay. All right. Because the, the bad stuff is... It's, okay, so it's the, it's the the crux of it's it all. it's your basic simple power boost, which you can get about the same power boost from doing aftermarket yeah. modifications. Is it just like up tuned or something? Probably. No, I mean it, Nissan it doesn't. It said it had a different wastegate and stuff oh, like that. So okay. there's a few right. different parts. So it's not on just it there. like a flash tune. No, it's not. It's not just okay. tuned like I think. No, the A ninety one Supra mm -hmm. and the A ninety. I'm trying to think what it was. It was some very minor that. Yeah. Made it. Anyways, um, it has some cosmetic upgrades apparently too. It comes with new gloss black wheels that are oh. 10 inch in the front, 10 and a half inch in the rear, and lighter than the performance oh, wheels. Really? So that's interesting. That's that is interesting because weren't the ones on yours are like forged rays? They're forged aren't they? rays. I think they it's just lighter made, now. They made wow. more forged rays. Yeah. Um. And <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's some uh, aftermarket. Well, not aftermarket. I guess. OEM plus goodies. They changed the tires too, didn't they? Dunlops. Yeah. It's a Dunlops. Dunlops? That's kind of, it is weird to see Nissan go with such odd titles. I haven't yeah, heard man. that name. I know, it is. I thought that was weird. When's the too? last time you heard someone like, yeah, I picked up a set of Dunlops, Dunlops for my Nissan? What the fuck? <laughs> I've never heard that. I think that it weird. will be available in four different colorways. I'm trying to do this all off memory um, when I checked it out. Uh, but I don't know. Now, for the, the 
elephant in the room. No, wait, wait, wait. I have a fun fact. Yeah. I have a better, fun. Better be fucking fun, Al. I, I have be a, jumping I up and have down a after fun this fact. fact about the 23 Nissan Z Nismo oh. thing. Okay. That it, it's coming out in 2023. <laughs> Waffles. Bro. Hey, hey, the hey. cat's going. Hey, he's hey. He's going mayhem. Hey. Full mayhem. Waffles. House destroyed. Waffles, Waffles out. It's making him Mario, more anxious. Mario, Anyways. go stop that cat. He, he goes my in wife front of the cat. Good job, Mario. Holy shit, he went flying. Okay. Anyways, what's your All fun right. fact? I'm dying to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so my fun fact about the Nismo Z is that on the front bumper, because I do like the way that they redesigned the front bumper, mm-hmm. side skirts rear, is uh, below the logo, there's like this new black lip that you'll see that's in the grill. And it protrudes a little bit. It looks like a little triangle. Okay. I'm convinced... And I'd be willing to go on the record to state that they are taking inspiration from the Datsun 240Z Eurospec front bumper that had almost an identical thing. It was like this like polyurethane bushing oh, part yeah, yeah, yeah. that went around the front. Because when you remove the whole bumper, a lot of people, they just put that black bar around yep. it because it looked really cool. I had it on my Datsun 280Z too. And then when I saw that, I'm like, I know where that's from. That's funny. That's my fun fact. Mm, I didn't have too much fun. Uh, so it's only Thanks. offered in automatic. Thank you, Dakota. There it is. A lot of people are up in arms about this shit. Now, is it because the manual isn't rated for the slight 20 horsepower <laughs> power boost? Or why are they not offering it in a manual? What purpose is that? I bet you it's... I, I almost want to say I have no fucking reason. Or are they going to do a one of the things in Toyota's playbook and announce <laughs> it after everyone gets their yeah. Nismo and just keep, like, sales kind of start coming down version. a little bit. Oh, yeah. here's the manual. Boop. And then all the people that had their Nismo sell it and then they buy manuals again. So then sales go back it up. Is, it is a weird decision to make. I've We've seen companies do this and they've gotten it right. I think there was a brief period of time where even like Porsche introduced a car with the the... The DSG, what are, what are they, PDK, the PDK transmission only. Mm. And then enough people complained and Porsche was like, okay, we'll bring it back. And they brought back a, a six speed. I think it was in like the GT4 RS or something like that. But Toyota did the same thing. Nissan yep. is now doing the same thing. The only Nissan's thing Nissan's done this before. The R35 is only automatic. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I just don't know if they ever will. I don't think they'll make the I don't the think Nismo they would. In a, in a manual. No one thought they'd do the Super in a manual either. I think, but that's Toyota. I do think they would. I, I do. Well, it's easy to say now that the manual's out. Yeah. Well, they had so many cars, but they had so <laughs> no, many. No, they would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they had so many cars coming out at the time. Like with when the Super was coming out, they already had development for, for the GR series car lineup yep. that they were doing over the next three years, which had the Corollas and the GR86s and all this sort of stuff. They had a whole like okay. sports line come out. <laughs> Nissan has just like two cars left. But they already have a manual. Like, just put what they have in the Nismo. Like what? Do you think it has to do with like emissions, or I, do you think it has to do with sales? I think it has to do. Nismo like it, will probably be limited production. Yeah, I feel like a hundred percent has to do with sales. It's like it, you're going to reach obviously a much larger audience with an automatic car because just not everyone drives manual transmission. So it's like you got True. this like limited production car that's going to be like a special edition that now you can sell to anyone. Yeah, but the Nismo 370Z wasn't anything that a bunch of collectors got all up in arms about. Yeah. I mean, but, it's a good-looking car. I like the 370Z Nismo is my mm-hmm. favorite looking Nissan like 350 370 car, Z car, I yeah. would say. I I don't know, man. Like I think there's like this growing, It's a weird choice. Like It is a weird choice. And I I think Nissan always seems to make I think sometimes decisions that are like consistently 7 out of 10s. Mm-hmm. And I like Nissan. I love Nissan, but it's like Every single time they announce something, it's always caught with like a Ugh. right. Yeah, they haven't it's like, like it's good, but then it's like they haven't like oh. knocked it out of the park yet. You know, it's and like I, right. And I love how waiting. Chris. I watched Chris Forsberg's video, and I, I love the dude. He's been a Nissan guy since yeah. forever, right? And he's like, he sits on the inside. He's like, yep. And it comes. You know, this is only going to come in a nine-speed automatic or whatever it was. He goes, but you know, in the commercial, we were sliding it around and that was the automatic and it was a lot of fun. Like he's like yeah. already putting the disclaimer <laughs> around. He's like, dude, I know it's an automatic. I don't know what the fuck to but tell you. But it's really yeah. fun. <laughs> to it's it's still fun though. Yeah. I don't really care to be honest. I don't yeah. care that it's only offered in manual or automatic. It's a it's car just a I would never purchase. Odd choice though. It is a, th- yeah, I don't understand it. Um, 
just because it's available. The manual is available. The front looks but so much better, though. I got to yeah. see it. One thing. Oh, I forgot to mention. Shark too, nose. The Recaros that are in it are sick. Yeah. I don't, have you guys seen the mm-hmm. seats? Recaro. Well, they so th- that's so actually sick. another fun story. A fun fact for you. The seats inside the Nismo Z, they take inspiration from the same prototype seats that were going to be in the R35 GTR, the oh. 2025 or whatever it was. Big but, then, but then they backed out because they were a little bit too racy. How do you know this? Because a long Who time ago, you working for? I was at a Nissan like announcement thing at oh. an undisclosed location last year. That's how I know. Ah. Anyway, um, so outside of that, the Nismo looks dope. I think it looks really cool. I I do think it looks nice. I think it looks a little bit better than mine, slightly. Mm-hmm. And the front end looks like a shark nose. Did they say like, how much it's gonna be? Knowing Nissan and Nissan dealerships, um. A fuck, a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Oh my probably. fucking god! No, no dude, watch, watch. When when TJ Hunt bought that proto spec, I think he got it like it at a figures. discount. But he said it was six figures That's for fucking that car. Crazy. You don't think another dealer's gonna get their hands on one of these and be like, oh, okay, what do you? Someone think will. MSRP will be on it. What's MSRP on the like the one that you got? Fifty something, right? Uh, I think I think all all in. It was fifty six. I bet it'd be like sixty. Oh, wait, was that 70. like tax title license or was that like fifty six? Well, I think that had like delivery and stuff in it oh, too. Okay. I can't. I, I would imagine it would fall MSRP right around sixty five or so. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Which 70. is weird. I don't know, dude. Recaro's pretty expensive. And it's like, and then again, I bet it's a sixty four nine ninety five. It already <laughs> pushes like that car, which is already in like a weird competitive space at that price, into an even more like you're talking like. 2009 2010 gtr money yeah Mm -hmm. at that point that's the thing that's so weird about the whole industry of sports cars right now where you have companies like toyota that just seem to be for some reason or another really getting their stride underneath them with cars yeah like sure they have their mistakes but like gr86 great entry level car Uh gr corolla internationally a a really fantastic car that most people can actually i saw my first one in appleton the other day did you yeah the supra Awesome car. The Toyota Those Supra is like yeah. uh, one of the yep. best ones you can buy right now. That's true. And it's like they, they have, and then you go to like the Overland and you got the Forerunners, you got oh, the Tacomas. They the just Tundras, announced, that did you stuff. see, uh, what's it called? The Land Cruiser. Land Cruiser. They're, They're bringing back the Land, Land Cruiser. Cruiser. The and it Land looks Land Cruiser. See, so you got Toyota that, that somehow it. has managed yeah. to figure it out. On all ends. You got the Overland, you got the Sport, you got like even, even just their like trucks, the, yeah. dude. Their yeah. Tundras and Tacomas are sick. And then you have Mitsubishi. We don't talk about that. Then we have then we have Subaru. There's rumors. You even there's up rumors Mitsubishi. that they're bringing back the Evo. I don't there's know about been it. Fucking the, r- yeah, but it's when surfacing they, they, again. They any, said they were s- done with the Evo tenants retiring. There was rumors that yeah. the next yeah, was but out. it's like surfacing. Any 18 year old with blender is making renders of <laughs> Evo, <okay>? Evo 11. <laughs> yeah, and then they're putting Xbox it on TikTok. 720. <laughs> yeah, the Xbox 720 videos at like 3 a.m. And then you have Honda <laughs> came out with the Type R. Kind of growing on us. Then the I like Acura. the Type R. It's just no one. Again, no one can fucking buy them. And then the Acura Type S. The, the Type S looks really good. That yes. one. So when, manual too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the Acura's coming out with a manual trans. So it's like some of these companies, I think, are going the right way, mm-hmm. and some are. They just need to make more cars. There's just so many going in like such a polar opposite direction. Like they're just EVs. SUVs, yep. EVs, SUVs, Ford. and and it's just capitalizing on just the U.S. market. It sucks. I don't know. Hear me. I think Nissan's trying to pull one of Toyota's plays. You think they'll release a manual? And they're like gonna a year? manual. They're, yeah. they're getting everyone riled up for marketing. <laughs> talking about that. Look at we're talking about it. We're talking yeah. about it forever. And then they're like, okay, we listen to you guys. <laughs> True. Yeah. We're releasing a manual because we listen to you guys. Yep. Yep. I could see it happening. It'll be a limited, limited edition of the Nismo. Yeah, I don't be going for two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, 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 that, I have a feeling because that's how the releases have been. It's all yeah. bullshit, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I just, I, when I look at some of these companies, I feel like they're the ones that are like really far ahead. Mm-hmm. In five, ten years, they know where they're going. They know exactly what they're doing. They're in a safe spot. I always think Toyota when I, when I think of that. And then you have companies where I feel like they are literally just f- trying to fucking figure out 18 months from now, like what they're what they're going to do. And Nissan, to me, for some reason, or is like right there. Yeah. Like, 
they're they're like it's it feels like they're just planning like 12 months ahead sometimes are they because they just have the same car for fucking 20 that's, years that's what he means because like they're not I mean. they they're not planning far enough ahead like they're, they're not, just reacting they're not, like they're playing 20 years out they're like <laughs> we made that that's gonna run for the yeah, next runner drive years. yeah the murano oh my <laughs> just god over I think they're over planned i think no. they plan too far ahead maybe i don't maybe. know i just i i don't see it's tough for me to see nissan like in a really proactive spot i do like the car though we spent you know way more time in it over this weekend which was a blast. I'm just waiting for Mazda to do something. Mazda ain't yeah. doing shit without Big Daddy Ford behind it. You yeah, know that. Know. Every single time, <laughs> this is like more on like the the uh, the Torque Motorsports side, but they're getting manufacturers on board for for the game mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And Mazda's response, like, kind of truncated, was like, "Yeah, sure, just let us know what you need. We'll be on board." And I'm like, that is such a Mazda response like, from yeah, a manufacturer. Want. They're just like, yeah, just do it. We don't. What do you want to eat? Oh, whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Everybody else is like, we want 27,000 pages yeah. of legal documentation. And Mazda's like, sure, throw us in. Yeah, you can use the RX-7. <laughs> it's fine. Everyone else does. RX-9. Where's Maybe RX someday. RX Maybe someday. And the what Evo do you, 11. What do you guys think is the most realistic out of touch car to come back do you think it's going to be something like the mazda rx9 i think it is do you think it's going to be something do you Mm -hmm. think it's going to be something like the uh let's say like a a manual gtr or an r36 or do you think a mitsubishi evo or a subaru sti would come back what I do think, you think is the most likely out of touch car? i think the the next like rx sports car will come back first you think i think so I mean, just like everything that like has been out there, the patents that have been out there, like the engine things that they're doing, they're experimenting with. I think I don't know if it'll be like completely rotary powered, but it will fall under like the RX lineage. I mean, it does make sense. The more I think about it, because like everyone else is doing it right now, yeah. Mazda's got to be feeling. They the got to be next. Mazda and, has made some and it's really like they, good they still got they the already right? have like the prototype out there. It's like yeah. the FT1, like when the FT1 was out for fucking ever. Like Mazda has like the RX Vision out there it's mm-hmm. been out there since like fucking what 2011 2009 something like that um i mean it's there you know they they, they got something to work with so i i, I, I kind of yeah. would bet money on i that. can't say i have no idea what the next one would be i can say some things i'd like to see yeah I would what would like you like to, to see? see an sti hatch back That'd be cool. um i is this confirmed the was it M3, M4 wagon is coming to the United States? I don't know if you it's know been what? officially confirmed. They've or they just been teasing sales. around with it. They're like, yeah. should we bring that, it over? And we're like, yes! That should happen. That should be a thing. I think if Mazda did something other than the Miata and SUV, that would be very I'd cool. even be happy with the new Miata. But I have a feeling it would be just electric. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love to see Honda come back with like an S2000. A Prelude? Style. Oh, no. Yeah, an yeah. S2K would be <laughs> like, sick. Like something where they're taking the tech from from the Type R and mm-hmm. they're throwing it in like a longer wheelbase. Yeah. You know, Rear wheel drive. Car. Yeah. Dude, I think that'd be a blast. That would new be wild. S2K would be amazing. It's just, I feel like Honda has been so tied up with like the, the new Type R, like even and just generators in general and generate Dude. and jets. Dude, Honda jets. Like, like Honda jets so now. has so much gosh darn money. Lawnmower. You would think they, they would have. You, you would think they would have some fuck around budget for like a fun sports car. And right. They're like no, not in the budget. We're gonna make they a couple. We're gonna make a couple Type R's. We're yeah, gonna but be I mean, like seventy grand. <laughs> you might get one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. Like, well, I, we saw the the one at EAA this week because they had like a big booth down there. They got the big jet. They had the new Type S. At and EAA, they had, they had the Type R. I was like, damn. You think Dodge would be nice any, if you could actually any more four cylinder turbo stuff? That would be sick. I feel like they would do it as a big fuck you. I think I could see it. Yeah, they had that <clears throat> SRT neon. Then yep. they had uh, Hope, or the, the Dodge Dart, and I mean that wasn't the I, I wouldn't put the yeah they had the caliber SRT as well, but the the Dart wasn't necessarily I would say the same line of like the SRT, but like. I, I wish would, they would bring it back. I, I wish Chevy would bring something back. Like the I was just going to say, I would too. love to see a Blackwing wagon. Ooh. Oh, my God. Like a CTSV crazy. sort yeah. of, yeah. But like a Blackwing back, wagon. Kind of a throwback back, to that, yeah. back in Eau Claire, Ooh. we used to go, was it called Rock Rock Falls Dragway? Yeah. Or, yeah. No. Is that what it was called? Something. I can't remember. It was in the middle of bum fucking It really was. Yeah. It really was in, the, in between two farm fields. And we would go for the test in two days, and it was like thirty bucks. Mm-hmm. I remember, but every single time I went, there was the same two CTSVs 
There were there th- there two were, of them? There was Gen 1, one was a wagon, one was uh, a sedan, and they mm. always ran against each other. They never ran with anybody else. Every yeah, so, time I saw one go, the other one was right yeah. there. And I remember seeing the CTSV wagon drive by, and I was like, that is the coolest goddamn car in the world. <laughs> the unicorn. They look like the stealth fighters. World. They do. They're they look like little fucking They're so jets. angular. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, they it. are very geometric. Yeah. They're not round at all. No. So with that being said... We will see the Nismo Z in like 2029 for the low, low price of 189.995. Yeah, maybe. Um, if if I can get my hands on one at not markup, I would probably buy it just to try it out. But it's likely never coming. Yeah, you just go test drive it. You don't have to buy it. Uh, all right. All sounds right. like a lot of work. What are we gonna do when we talk back? What talk back seizure? What are, what are we gonna get when we talk back? <laughs> seizure help. We're gonna go practice a few words and we'll be right back. <laughs> all right. So one thing I wanted to talk about now that we're back is if all three of us could pick up our first car, like we were sixteen years old right now, with everything we know in today's day and age, what first car would we get? Um, before we do that though, let's talk about our first car that we had that like got us into the car scene. So maybe not necessarily our first, first car yeah. because those are usually yeah. <clears throat> lame, whatever yeah. could get you get you by. out of your garage um, or driveway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Jels, what yeah. was your first car that you'd say stepped you into the modification tuner car? It was my 1998 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Basically picked it out of a garage. It had a blown motor in it. Um, guy was just getting rid of it and I was like, I'll take it because that looks dope and I want a Mitsubishi Eclipse and I was just like daydreaming over one. That's bold of <laughs> Not realizing that there was a difference between like the GS, GSX, GST. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's sick. Bro, right. That was like back when like seeing that you could have a button that controlled the speed on the highway, also called cruise control, was mm-hmm. like the most crazy thought in my 16 <laughs> year old brain. My first car. 1994 Mitsubishi 3000 GT Big Mitsubishi guys. boys. Yeah, SL, so not the VR4. Hell yeah. That was also when <laughs> I did <didn't>, model. <laughs> dude, I did not understand. I know. Either there either. was a difference it looked between the, the two. They look so similar. Right. And I was I was actually going I remember I was going to a bonfire at a friend's house driving past North High School and it was a block away mm-hmm. from North High School. I drove by it, saw it, took a picture, went to the the you know bonfire thing called the guy asked him if i could check it out the next day sold the mercedes i had an old mercedes that i had at the time and my dad dropped me off to pick up the 3000 gt and then when we got in it he asked me if i knew how to drive manual and i uh, said no nice no nice. you figured out though right i had to oh yeah <laughs> sold my car <laughs> <laughs> dakota yep my first one was a pagani y <laughs> no way TikTok. and i buy my course buy my course uh, <laughs> and i sold it to get a 99 Mustang GT. That was Damn. the first car that I started actually like modifying. That's actually um, a good put pick. Stuff automatic. Uh, it, was, it was almost a good pick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't know. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Um, I was scared to drive manual, admittedly. Uh, and I didn't know what I was going to do. So 99 Mustang GT came up and I thought they were awesome. That's what I picked up. Do we have like a budget for if we're talking about what we would buy I would now? say it should be in a similar but which I know is tough now. So you maybe add a couple grand or so. Okay. Um, I would say like when I was but, when I was looking around at the time, I, I was like five yeah. thousand. Yeah, I was at what I was I at forty five hundred. Yeah. I was like capped at. Mm-hmm. at so we'll say can... keep it under ten. Yeah, I would say that's about keep a it under yeah. ten. First car. Maybe you gotta get a little bit of a loan ski, but in today's sure. day and age, it doesn't necessarily mean like I'm so saying like twenty twenty cards. So are like, you saying like if we would go back back i'm saying you're 16 years old right now with the knowledge that you have nice what car are you gonna go buy as your first car i got it and limited budget okay what do you got segway super scooter (laughs) and with the other seven thousand dollars i'm gonna buy myself a house just kidding scooter sick but the house sucks that was just an ad boo All right, you can keep it now. Yeah. Hey, what's your real answer? Thanks, Segway. Uh, <laughs> I'm really trying to think because there's not a whole lot. Okay, I'll go then. Because I I don't know if you guys will be surprised. I got Or that. you'll be like, okay, yeah. I think I would genuinely go and spend a very long time looking for a clean Mark IV GTI. Okay. Not bad. It It's... It teaches you enough because you're going to have issues with it, but they're 
they're going to be fixable that yeah. you can do yourself. Parts are inexpensive. It's very satisfying to modify, taking it from stock to modify because it's a boosted car. Um, and it's practical. It's front wheel drive. It's not going to get me in too much trouble. It's not too quick. Nothing for it is very expensive. The There's used parts everywhere. The only hard part is just finding a clean one. But if I could start off with a clean one, I'm emphasizing on that. I'm not telling you to go buy a Mark IV GTI <laughs> that's been ran through it because you're going to have life on yeah. hell trying life to deal with hell. that. Life on hell. Okay. Mark IV GTI. Perfect first car, in my opinion. I would probably go with, <clears throat> as probably cliche as it would sound, oh, probably God, either sick. an E30 Ooh, okay. and go go with just try, a same conversation, try to find something just super clean because a lot of the same reasons, it's not going to be that fast. You're not buying an M3. You know, you're probably going to get a 318 or I think yeah. like a 325 was the highest they had back then or something like mm -hmm. that. But it's a really good looking car. You can learn the basics on it. You can understand how the, the suspension works. Like you can get them in manual, the rear wheel drive. I think you can run wheel wheel drive in the winter time. Is it? Right oh, absolutely. Tires. Putting suspension E30 straight up stupid. Yeah, that sucks. Well, I would never well, pick that car. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, just yeah, that was the that Other, is the, otherwise, some of the worst. Otherwise, I would get an E E forty six. Big BMW. Guy. I'd rather go with an E thirty six other than either really? of those. Just I love. Always my talks e up his E thirty six. I just like. I, there was I, something about that car. I'm gonna own another one one day. Weird. You guys I are just, weirdos. I just think when you when you start talking like trying to max out a budget, like what yeah. manufacturer really kind of does a good spread of it all. BMW does do a pretty good spread of it. I think new BMW does it very well. I don't know about old BMW. They had a lot of... I don't know. Maybe I had bad taste in my mouth from the BMWs I had. <laughs> the older ones. That's it right. was a fucking nightmare. I don't think they're terrible. I'm having flashbacks right now. Uh, the E36 was, like, e was like new enough, I think, that like... Dude, you tell me all the issues. You've it was had also with that it was also yeah. nine hundred dollars and had like two hundred fifty thousand miles on it. Okay, it was just, okay. you're right. You're right. The fact that it got me anywhere for the five years that I owned it was fucking incredible. There's yeah. some fa fun factor to it, and I you know, <laughs> driving driving around the E30. There, it does make you feel a type of way, even yeah. though it can't move out of but its I, own way. There's I'm something also, about driving it. But I'm also just saying, like, if you're 16 and you want like a step up on like class and style, you yeah. can't go wrong with it. Looks E30. good. Yeah. Everybody's gonna like the fact I that mean, you drive an yeah. E30. Well, yeah, oh, a Mark want... IV GTI, people are going to be like, oh, whatever. Like, unless wow. you're... Not uh, all of us want the clout, Alex. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd go back to another <laughs> Pagani Huayra. But you're six, I got too much you're, attention. You are 16. You're going to want the clout. Oh my God. Uh, you will. Every every 16-year-old kid that wants to be in the car scene is aiming for I a little I said with what you know now. Yeah. So oh, go with the E30. Wants clout. <laughs> yeah. E30. I didn't expect the E30. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's an interesting choice. I'm surprised you didn't think of some sub ten thousand dollar Porsche <laughs> with three hundred thousand miles or yeah, something. Yeah, like a nine four four or something. The nine the nine four four would be cool, but like I don't know enough about it. That's to right. like, wait. Gels hasn't said his. Of course he hasn't. It's Gels. Gels. I was waiting. He's for gonna it. say Eclipse. I was a I was, GSL Eclipse GSL. from nineteen ninety eight point five. No, not. I was originally gonna say like a GSX. No, no, no. Like oh wow, yeah, the four G sixty three is cooler than the 428 yeah. and it's boosted and it's all wheel drive and it's way cooler. I would honestly probably say like an Acura RSX. Ooh. That's a good one. Six speed. I like that. K series. NA. NA. <laughs> good to go. Of, of course. <laughs> Damn it. You can even in your dreams, yeah. you can't get a boosted car. Yeah. Come on. I love the, I love the RSX. I, man. No, I, I do like those cars. I was stumbling across my old <laughs> old videos, just kind of cleaning up my library, and I came across the video of you talking about your first experience in the Mark IV Supra when we were with uh yeah. with Driver. And <laughs> literally pan over to Charles and he's like, how come <laughs> even when I'm here, I'm the only <laughs> fucking guy driving a naturally NA aspirated car. car? Yeah, that was wild. Dude oh. has this I love the, it. I love the century. It's yeah, it was. But it was still kind of <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I, it's a 12 cylinder. Yeah. But yeah. Still no forced induction. <laughs> and the fact that it had 12 cylinders, that was about it. Oh, God, my. that car was great, though. I love that car. But... Just, I don't know how you have this magnet. I don't know. Well, it's uh, obviously your choices. Yeah. yeah Even yeah. like in your wildest dreams, saying, yeah, any car you want under 10K, you're like, <laughs> RSX. And a Honda. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's cool. I've I'm, always liked those cars. Mm -hmm. They're good looking. The Even like the old old Hondas with like the, the VTEC, like mm -hmm. the 
like the standard normal VTEC where it was just like such a game changer. Those yeah. cars would just be a blast to have mm -hmm. again. You know, just like a free rowing prelude would be cool. Preludes are awesome. Okay. If somebody should make, if you're out there, go make a prelude cool. And I think you would just blow up. Like, I know there's also builds I've out seen there already, but like, dude, preludes are yeah. so dope. And nobody, even, nobody even I like think seems to do them. Too. Yeah, preludes are super cool. Yeah, Whenever I see one, I get excited. Yeah, I love throttle because they fucking somehow build cars in like 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I saw that's one crazy. TikTok of them building a prelude. I'm like, oh, that's really yeah, sick. Yeah, I feel like. I literally saw it when I was having coffee in the morning. <laughs> I went, when I was going to bed, I watched a couple of TikToks and it was the fucking last yeah. part of the build series. I'm like. Like, I understand that they probably like film ahead, but yeah, it does feel like. Oh, got the new car. End of the day, it's done. It's gave away. <laughs> We're on to the next one. You know how self-conscious I got when I saw I them know, build? I want to know how far ahead they are. Dude, they it's built an S2K in like three days. I know. It took me three days to like just get one thing, one fender <laughs> off the S2000. I'm like, holy Where, shit. Your S2000 has been it? gone for like... Three yeah, months. we we loaded that thing up on a trailer, and I have not seen it. Yeah, since. it kind of scares me because you were gone, and we just came over and loaded it in a trailer, <laughs> and it disappeared. And I don't know where it went after that, I'm and not, it never came back. I'm also not too sure. I've Did you asked, sell it? <laughs> I've asked where it is. I've asked an update on not, oh, not God. getting the amount of response. Here we go. But uh, when it's back, oh my God. I'll be sure to let you know. Okay, oh, I'm sure <laughs> we'll hear it. I love STK. Clap car returns. The clap car okay, returns. Okay, so same. Rules, uh, domestic car only, though. Domestic car only? Yeah. Chrysler Under cross, 10K. Chrysler Crossfire SRT6. Shut the fuck up. So gross. Did you really say that? Or were you saying it, like, ironically? I was saying it kind of ironically, but <laughs> I just, I, like, I remembered that those existed. I was like, holy shit, those are kind of weird. Chevy Corvette. Shape like a... Eh, That's yeah. not a bad... You have to get an older one, but yeah, you can do it 100%. It'd be rough and... Wisconsin, I think a 16 year old with a fucking Corvette in the winter is the you're dead. You're not getting it to 17. Listen, but. listen. There's a lot of safer <laughs> cars you can get, but that yeah. would be the dopest one. I'd probably get a SRT Neon. Ooh yeah, I'd get a SRT Caliber. Caliber be cool too. Those Caliber cool too. But like my my first actual car was boosted an SXT Neon. And like <laughs> all of me, of oh, course, wanted like the that. SRT. For, it's like, oh, it's right there. They're cool cars, yeah. honestly. They get a ton of shit. And they were like, and they were huge. Like when I was like getting into the car scene, like they were mm -hmm. everywhere. Oh, yeah. and did like, you have a, ever have a period in in your no I'm modification <laughs> oh. <laughs> lifestyle where you started with a base model to try and save money than buying the high performance one and try to make like the part swaps? Because that was really popular when I was like sixteen, seven. People were like. Oh, I bought you know the EX, but I'm gonna put all SI parts on it. Blah blah blah. Yeah, blah. and they never actually worked out because no, know. that's that was kind of like my goal with like the the Eclipse. I was like, oh well, I'll just boost the 428. It'll be like similar. And then like on the forums, everyone talked to you like you're gonna spend so much fucking money like boosting that thing and doing things that you need to it that you might as well just sell it and buy a GSX. Yeah. All right. European. European. Uh, Mark IV GTI. <laughs> E36. Done. Japanese. Um, I know we were just talking about it and I'm not trying to like I can't think but I genuinely think I would pick a Prelude or um, which generation is the Integra with like the four round headlights <coughs> those are kind of sick too yeah I know which Celica? one Celica what that's not that's a generation a, a of Integra <laughs> or is that what your thinking. choice <laughs> You you got him with the four round headlights. I was just thinking about the I was thinking about the one meme where it's like the two yeah, headlights and, and the small the face. face and it zooms yeah. further and further and further. That's all I can. I'm trying think to think. Uh, let me think of other cars under 10k. I don't know. Like when Sean Berger picked up that super clean Integra. Yeah, that was dope. It's all I wanted after I see. It. I was mm -hmm. so jealous. It'd be so fun. That it's man is so such a weird, cool. awesome taste in vehicles. <laughs> he has all the most individualistic place. taste in vehicles. He's the king of, uh, if you guys don't know, Sean too well. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, he lives in Florida now, big Florida, big Florida man. Energy, but he's just the king, and he would agree if he was sitting here, <laughs> of getting a car that had six-figure <laughs> MSRP and paying like, like nine grand for yeah. it. And he loves that shit. Yeah. And all the clerks like, and features, that is his favorite <laughs> shit in the world. He's like, dude, someone paid like a hundred grand for this car like 20 years ago, and I bought it for like a couple grand. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll love the yeah. shit out of it and do a lot of burnouts. Yeah, well, I remember, lots of burnouts. I remember being in Lacrosse Speedway. He had a green, like I can't remember what it was. I think it was an S class mercedes back oh, and i remember you were like just sitting on the side of the road and he comes up to me he's like you want to check out my car and i was like sure 
He goes, okay. And I was like expecting to go in the <laughs> okay. passenger seat and I go to like open up the passenger seat. He goes, no, 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 no. You're driving? <laughs> He's like, back seat. Oh, back seat? I'm like, what? Okay. So I open up the back Oh, because seat. it had reclining and rear And it had the seats. reclining rear <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, dude, the owner still had the sticker oh from the window. God. He's he like, dude, this is a hundred and twenty one thousand dollar <laughs> car. I mean, it is cool when you think about it because someone did pay that and then you're getting it for dirt cheap, but you get to reap all the features yep. that hopefully burn out. still work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if they don't, the problems. car is bricked. Yeah. Yeah. But uh okay, so we covered Euro JDM and domestic. Yeah. I, I'm still torn. I feel like there's probably a better choice. For JDM, I don't know. Prelude and Tiger is sick. That's but the thing that's yeah. Honda like killed it with that like price range for mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. They really did. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to get into like I don't have any Let's experience, get but a, a GT4 Celica. Oh, okay. that would be kind of yeah. fun to try out. I saw one I of those at those are. Modest, the Modest Car Show, and I just it looked really fun. Like, the wheelbase was a little out. shorter. Did you enjoy your FB RX7 when you had it? Did you like it, or was it? I kind of like it. Like you would enjoy freshly squeezed lemonade that you have to make like it's okay it's, it's fun every once in a while yeah. but it, it's it's not what you would want to do every time you want lemonade yeah it's it's kind of like it was a fun car to drive and experience but it's old it's mm-hmm. got its you know quirks and features and like it's it's not it wasn't a fast car even the rotary wasn't very no like, anything it was a that was a 12a wasn't it yeah it was like it this, wasn't even the 1.3 yeah, it, it was wasn't a one point, sp- carbureted yeah. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a special anything, but I feel like that would be fun though. Like, I, there, there's something about that like generation. I feel like it would be really cool to get like a really clean one, dump it on some like just nice wheels, and then just like clean up the interior really good. Yeah, and it would just like it'd be like a little time capsule, but yeah. like yeah. So I'd really like to do. I'd really like a build uh, around an FC. FCs like, are dope. They they've, they've gone up in price quite yeah. a bit because the FDs are just. I think they're kind of like played out to the point now too. I have seen so many people though now jump into rotary building on yeah. YouTube. I've it has been everyone. Yeah, it's you know, and they, it goes through like spurts of like you know everyone did this. Now they're now this is the next thing. Like <laughs> it'll come and go. I think. No, Gels was on like the forefront of that. You picked up an RX8 like the perfect time. I did. Yeah. I did. Because like they they you they went up a little bit, but they're down. To, I think we're like. I think you and Rob there. Dom. <laughs> Made the entire rotary scene that is today. Rob Dom is the OG. Oh, 100 percent of rotaries. That he's, man just he's the god. <clears throat> like yeah. if you even if you go all the way back to like the beginning days, you remember when like people would give him shit. Oh for yeah, working on that. Now everybody loves him for days. Like there was a period of time where people were like, I can't believe this guy. Like, why is he wasting his time? What's he doing? Yeah. Well, even with like his like four rotor like four wheel drive one, it was like, why you're never gonna get that running? Like what are you doing? You're wasting yeah. your time. They say. Rob Dom's heart is in the shape of a triangle. I love sport. It doesn't like pump; it spins. Mm-hmm. Centrifugal force. And he has to inject fuel, or er, I'm sorry, oil yeah. into his veins. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I've also heard that. We're gonna take a small break, <laughs> um, and we'll be right back. I really want to do the thing where you try laughing but without smiling. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking terrible. <laughs> That is what I see in my nightmare. I didn't say you couldn't open your mouth. I just that, said you can't. That woke me up. I hated that. That was an holy I shit. I guess it, also this is a podcast, so it's not nearly as funny unless you're watching. But, Which, I mean, by the way, be sure to be subscribed because that was, okay. that was wild. Subs- okay, I have a question for you, though. Subscribe to what, though? Because, bro, <laughs> I've seen you on like 30 fucking YouTube channels lately. What the hell's yeah. going on? What are you doing? I'm you a- make a video. You make <laughs> like eight videos a day and they go ever. You're on Scotty Kilmer status. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rev up your end. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. All right. Let's hear it, bud. What do, so, you, what do you got going on? <laughs> so, so. Explain to me. We have obviously Alex Martini, which is just my personal yep, channel yep. where I'm building my stuff and talking about like community things, like things that are that are happening out there. One line to describe Alex Martini. Uh community news and sometimes car builds. Nice. I like that. That sounds like Fox Eleven. Well, you asked me to explain <laughs> it in one <laughs> sentence. All right, okay. We're coming up at seven. <laughs> Find out where the news fuck my S2000 is. And loud car bills. We'll be right back. Where is it? We have no idea. <laughs> At 6 p.m., we're going to be talking about street takeovers, so oh, stay man. tuned. Yeah. Um, so I have that. And okay. then 
one. I'm also partnered with Torque Motorsport. Oh, yeah. So I'm their brand ambassador for Torque Motorsport so what here does that on, mean? The, on the state side. So I create content for them um, and kind of help them push Torque Drift 2 that's coming out next year. Aren't they, they're like the main sponsor of Formula Drift. They're right? one of the main sponsors for Formula Drift. Awesome yeah, team, super creative, oh, fantastic. Um, and I... We, we do content. So we talk about drifting. We talk about motorsports. We talk about some products and stuff here and there. And then we go to Formula Drift events. We scan the tracks for them. So you're helping them make some videos and you're in some of the content. Yep. And, stuff like and then that. So they that GR86, the blue one that we've been working on that you've seen every once in a while, that's Torque Motorsport. That's so that's Torque not Motor. your car? No, 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 no. Not your car? No, no, no. Nope. That's their car. But I get to drive it. Yeah. It's like all the perks mm, and benefits without okay. any of the negatives. It's getting a little blurry. All right. What else? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> and then we have Martini Works. Martini this. Works is this. Yes. Along with the Unbox channel. Yeah, explain the difference for the people, the difference between Alex Martini and Martini Works. Well, Martini Works is, is the business. It's the brand. Oh. It's it's going to be business. the home where we educate and entertain on like parts and builds and things like that because that's kind of what made... What I really enjoyed about doing this stuff is kind of like being able to talk about the products, educate on things that you may not know, and help people build their cars. So that's why Martini Works has build threads, is because you can learn how to build your car from people who already built their car. Right. And then the parts that are on there, you can buy right from us. You're supporting us, just literally a group of homies that love cars, to, to kind of rebuild and, and start a new brand. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at. And there will be multiple channels for that. Oh, God, well. yeah. So we yep. have the podcast channel. Obviously. Which is this one. This. Welcome. If you're here, you're a true OG. And really, when this yeah. shit blows up to the moon, we'll look at you guys and we'll know. The podcast peeps are the OGs. Those are they the were, cool ones. If you stick around for an hour long podcast, you are one of the, exactly. the best. I mean, yeah. um, and then we have the, the, main, the main channel. channel. That's where there's more of like the entertainment. The, the how to modify series. How to modify yep. series. Yep. Things like that. The build thread series where we talk about people's cars. Um, and we've got some new series that we'll be dropping in August, which is awesome. We got the Nissan Z, so that build will be on right. Martini Works. Then there's another channel. And we have the Unboxed. That we've been in the talks about. Yep. So the Unboxed channel is the the special sauce. Sauce. That we're dropping where we're going to be going uh, down and dirty in between the crevices Whoa. to talk about products, breaking them down, explaining them lining up competitor brands and seeing which one's just marketing and which one is actually a better product. Damn. We're well, like, I think people might think like, oh, this sounds familiar, but it's like the difference is and what we've talked about and stuff is like showcasing brands that we give a fuck about, that we enjoy, that we use, that we like, and that is the difference. We don't promote something for the sake of promoting it. Yeah. You're not just going to make a video because you got cut a check. It's going to be good shit. Yeah, I think it's just about like just being transparent about yeah. it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And you've told the the brands coming on board that too. It's like we are yeah. going to say, yeah, our what our it is, experience. Yeah. And I, I mean that even happened yesterday. We had a, a company that reached out to us that was interested in providing like a carbon fiber hood and fenders for the Nissan Z. And I said, well, one, we need to get our hands on it first. Two, it needs to be functional. We want anything that's going on the Z to be functional because right. we're going to beat the shit out of it because nobody else has. Um, and if the product's not good, we're going to tell people that the product's not good. Yeah. So you have to be okay with us saying, you know, if it's good or it's not. Like, well, we give it to you a discount. You got to talk good about it. It's like, but, no, dude. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's such a huge thing. And especially in yeah. today's day and age where it's like, Man, with like TikTok, anything you that you know. see that's got a product on it, I mean, most of the time, everything, it's, everything is the best thing out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's and like it, that can't be. Yeah, and so we're, we're we are trying to change that. I mean, there's some there's some going to be some healthy competition, I think, mm -hmm. on Martini Works, especially in the coilover game, because that's where we're we're really starting. BC Racing, Fortunato, Feel, mm -hmm. Tane. We're going to be bringing all of those competitors together, and we're just going to be talking about them as if we don't sell them and we're going to be looking at it and saying which one we think is better, which one feels better. And we're going to kind of get rid of the, the money bias right. that sits in this industry. Cause there's a ton of it. There's a fuck ton of it. Yeah, I you promise know? you moving forward, whether it's on my personal channel or if we ever do anything or whatever, I'm not saying that I like a product unless I fucking like it. Yeah. I mean that I, I truly mean that. I, and it was really cool. Like we got a chance to talk with continental a little bit too, even on the tire game. And you said the same thing. It was, yo, like, we're going to be promoting products we enjoy. And like, and they're like, 
well, if there's something you don't like, absolutely tell us. Like, yeah, we right. need to know that info. So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, by all means. And I thought that was dope. I yeah. thought that was super cool. Yeah, it's it's about, like, just having a soul, I think, again, and, like, mm-hmm. putting the heart back into the, into the sport of it. Because I don't think there's any shortage of, you know, influencers out there that are doing fantastic content, building super cool yeah, cars, absolutely. doing insane shit. Like, that's not my game with anything that we just talked right. about. My game is to build a community where people can learn how to build their cars, you know, like building a community for the car enthusiast and helping them understand where do they want to build their car and what do they want to do? And being super honest about it too. Like if you're going to buy a ship part, this is the kind of ship part I would buy. If you're looking to save some money, don't cheap out here (laughs) and here cheap out here. If you're gonna, you know, um, and that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. So yeah, I'm kind of a YouTube slut right now, but hopefully it fixes itself. Um, okay. So I went over to martineworks.com and checked it out. I mean, I upload. I was on the first build threads, just saying. Damn, tooting my own horn. But proud of you. I, I support the homies. Um, the website's a little bare, Alex. Like, <laughs> not every super part I want is on there. Do you like? What is the plan here? Obviously, the website's in its beginning stages. Mm-hmm. It's a baby, but like, it's your baby. Yeah. Um, What's going on with that? So we're adding new brands almost like every week. Uh, the biggest thing though for us is we're actually walking through like, what do we want to have on the site? So as we're getting access to new brands or dealers, you know, turn 14 has bajillion products. We don't want to have every brand on, on the site because maybe we don't know the brand. Maybe we don't like the brand. Maybe the brand makes crap products, you know, so that's taking a little bit more time than we thought. But our goal is, is that over the next probably four to six weeks, you're going to see a lot more products on Martini Works. And you're also going to see us go direct with a lot of these manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, our goal is to get direct with Continental and Michelin and BBS and Koenig and Rotafone, all these brands, so that we can start to not just create content for for y'all, but also give feedback back to the manufacturer, Mm -hmm. if they're willing to hear it. Some of them don't give a shit, and some of them want (laughs) nothing to do with us because they don't want us to talk about their brand once they heard what we were doing. Yeah. Uh oh. I mean, it it happened literally. Like it happened. Max last peeding week. rods. Yeah, <laughs> dude. That that happened like yeah. that happened like last week. I was talking to uh, uh, a company down in Chicago about the Nissan Z coilovers, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Yeah, we do all of our in house testing. We do it all ourselves. We're very proud of this. We've been huge Z people since early 2003." And they're like, "If you want, we can definitely work together on maybe getting you a set of coilovers that we really like." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, uh, it's definitely interesting. I know I've been thinking about maybe either going with like." BCs to test out or Fortunatos to test out. And they're like, well, what, what do you mean? Which one are you going with? And I started talking I'm like, well, you don't want to go with them. You want to go with these guys. These guys don't know what they're doing, but these guys know what, and yeah. they, and the whole, you know, the whole shit yep. pot started, started to coming stir, out. you know, on which ones they think are, you know, just rebranded coilovers and which ones are good. And like, it's really crazy for me to hear that stuff, but nobody else, I think, hears it that mm-hmm. much and so our goal is to just kind of share that a little bit more on you know is 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 a bc coilover actually good or when you're going from stock suspension to an aftermarket coilover kit is it always going to feel better right and it no it's, it's not and it's not yeah, just newsflash <laughs> not always <clears throat> so not saying that's bc i love bc but yeah just uh that's kind of where we're at bcs yeah <clears throat> yeah no issue with them how many bcs you had i got them on the daily so i drive them every day is that all you've had mm-hmm. okay what about you Fortune, Moton. That's not what I asked. AST, <laughs> I, said, you had, I was like, have you ever had BCs? He's like, I got Fortune, Fortune Auto, Moton. Moton. <laughs> yes. Yes, what, I What'd you have, have I had BCs back on a... Uh, yes. Yeah. I had BCs on my Cobalt SS. I had Eibach Loring Springs for two weeks, and I was like, I, I got to slam this thing. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> and then I found out it's really hard to slam cobalts, and it made me say, but I lowered it as much as I could. We're also <clears> doing <throat> the same thing with tires because tires are the most confusing ass shit. That is a wild there. world. I've the world. grown to love tires in the weirdest way. I think I'm just getting it's such older, a nerdy but subject, dude, but it's awesome. Oh, dude, yeah. it just the fucking. I, we've talked about this. So I won't be a dead horse, but it's just like when I finally woke up and bought the more expensive tire. I think that was it. I think yeah. I just really, I never could afford or been in a position to get tires that were more expensive right so i've always just because they just look the nitto they neogens. all look the same i ran nitto neogens for fucking <laughs> ever yeah like yeah. five years straight but I, hey i mean shout out to nitto neogens i still think those are a great tire for the price they're yeah. they're yeah. solid they're all seasons they're asymmetrical they, too. They, they do the job all right um but when you get into that like next level 
Michelin Pilot Sport 4S, Extreme Contact Sport 02, stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my God, I've just been having a ball because it's so fun when you have tires that can hook and grab and. Yeah, you like you get to experience more of the car. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I feel like coilovers connect you more to the car, but the tires are what get the whole thing rocking and rolling right. together. It's your last point of contact. Yeah, I love tires so much. I licked one that drove all around LA. Yeah, Joe's was there. You haven't been the same since. Yeah, yeah, I have loved them after that. You want to show off the tattoo? <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't wait. I, have I ever showed this anywhere? I feel like uh, you haven't. Do you not wanna? Do you wanna save that for when we, when when when? I mean, now that we special, talked about I feel like it, we have talked about it. Yeah, at we one have. Point. I don't know if I showed it, but for the podcast homies and the podcast homies only, on his left nipple, it, it's very <laughs> subtle, and it's on, not on my nipple, but I have an extreme contact <laughs> sport O two challenge, challenge tattoo. That was a great week. Oh my god, that yep. was such a fun week. <laughs> so. Yep, I like tires. <laughs> I think the only other automotive-related tattoos I have a silly little spark. We should have won. Wrist. We should have won for that, and we didn't. And it was kind of fucked up. Yeah, I don't want to talk about yeah, that. That's but fine. It was still like one of the craziest events I've ever done in my entire life. Do you want to know was... what we should do? We should go what? buy some tires off Alibaba. Why? Okay, and just see what they're like. Are there? Are there like? I might be a little arrogant here, but like, are there like really like no name brand tires like that out there that are like stupid cheap? Yes. Alex showed me some that were, I've never seen tires. That really? I don't even understand how they can be that cheap. Yeah, it's weird. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. we should definitely buy them. I, I think it'd be fun. And then take them and see how they perform. Yeah. And guess what? What if you guys use them for like drifting and they actually like check out? Like, <laughs> I, I mean, doubt it, <laughs> but yeah. I guess, ti- well, what about on the rears? Like how important are your rear tires when you're drifting? Like I mean, what you're using? The, like if you got like a good amount of horsepower, it's pretty decent because like you need, there's a point where you okay, need but the you don't. grip. You know, <laughs> no, so I need the least, least amount of grip so as possible. That's what I'm so saying. you want the shit, biggest, shit. the biggest thing is like, it just needs to stay together. Cause there's uh, a lot of, a uh, lot of wheel speed. Yes. A lot that of like heat cycling. Yeah. You're yeah, right. That okay. happened to one of our friends who she, her entire tire, like it delaminated. delaminated. Yeah. And it just completely fell apart. Mm-hmm. Like it still had tread on it too. Like it, yeah, just a chunk of it fell out. Yeah. Which is <laughs> okay. So that you definitely don't want. So, okay. So it's still in part. So you can cheap up, but you can't, you, yeah. they got to be credible tires. Okay. So yeah. probably not a great thing to yeah, do. Just make sure that it stays a circle in one piece. That's, That's the biggest. You're asking a lot now. Well, it's true. I want to get, yeah, it'd be cool to get some, some cheap tires and just see how they do. The compound is everything, though. Yeah. Like, the compound in a tire is, is everything. And that's when you start seeing some of these companies that are a little bit snobbish about their tire manufacturing because they've done it for a century. Literally. Because they've dialed it in so perfectly that when they see these other companies pop out of nowhere, they're like, and They're like, our tires are great. It's like, no, it's not. No, your tires are <laughs> dog shit. Continental like, is older than the state of Colorado. What are you doing? Did you get a point for that, too? Like, from the challenge thing? Is no. Is that how I you knew that? No, I'm just fucking intelligent, though. No. Okay. <laughs> he's like, fuck, I don't have any cool tire facts. Yeah, he's been dropping <laughs> fun like facts all dumb. day. Oh my yeah, God. no tire fun facts, though. Do you, yeah, want, just, do you want to just tire go fact? fun fact for fun fact? What's, you know, Bibendum was a stack yes. of white tires. Yes, that's Michelin's Ray logo. Edouard came up with in 1894. Right. I didn't know the year. Okay. So I'll give you that. But I knew the story you know, was to get people logo. to travel out places. No. Did you know hippos have pink milk? <laughs> did you know that a baby seal is really hairy until it gets a little older and then it sheds it and it looks like one of those naked beans for the rest of its life i thought they still were hairy the hair is just slicked back because they're always in the water can you fact check that i got no seal facts you don't need a seal fact that's not what we're doing don't be googling facts you said to fact check it oh so yeah sorry, i kept <laughs> Jesus. I we were going all over the place oh i i don't really have fun facts off the top of my head you know how i am with that <laughs> i gotta be prepared for this shit did you know that a tuna never stops moving yes i did know that all right i've caught a tuna motherfucker have you did it, did it stop moving no dude my entire hip and like leg region because that's where the fishing rod was was completely black and purple after fighting this tuna. Insane. Did you know? Fact? Oh, no. <laughs> he doesn't know. No. Did you know Gels doesn't have any fun facts? <laughs> nope. <laughs> if Gels was a type of drink, what type of drink would Gels be? 
Did you know that the LS400 had a commercial where they balanced a glass of champagne or wine, I can't remember, on the hood on a dyno and ran the car up to like 100 miles an hour and it yes. stayed perfectly still? Mm-hmm. Or like when Lexus LFA had their commercial breaking a glass of champagne because of the frequency of the exhaust and then it had to be yeah. fact-checked because it was almost not true, but it was kind of true. <laughs> I know the LFA, the exhaust was tuned to a specific note. Like, yeah, frequency. it made a sound, but then audio engineers made the exhaust, so it would make a specific tone. Yeah. Which is why it's one of the best sounding cars. It's such a beautiful ever sounding made. car. Did you know? <laughs> I'm just waiting for gels here. I'm just listening. Acura I'm and Honda are the same brand. <gasps> what? I, I oh, know. I, way. I know. Next you're going to tell me that Toyota and Lexus are the same. I don't no, fucking believe no, that. No, no, no. Not that one. No. Um, did you know? I meant. <laughs> did you know that Max Verstappen griefed his latest online championship race? I don't give race? a fuck about Formula One. Did I'm you sorry. know? I don't care. I don't get it. Alex sleeps <laughs> with racing. his socks on. No, I take them off before I go to sleep. But though. partially with his big toe, it my little like a, toe. I got a quick. Toe. I got a quick this release. Story. We don't. We don't have sleepovers with Alex. But <laughs> he yeah, told Del, us this story. Dakota was sleeping in my bed one time. <laughs> oh, okay. And he was a little curious on on why my Took socks a were on. under the covers. Yeah. He was playing some footsie with me. He was wondering why I still have my socks on. I said, well, that, was, I said that was for later. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in checking out the Martini Works journey, make sure to check out the website and then check out the three channels we have. If you're only subscribed to one, then you only get 0.5 points. If you're subscribed to all three, you get 100 points. <gasps> you see how easy it is to earn extra points? What do the points get you? Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment if there's any subjects you want us to touch on or if we need to brush up on our fun facts a little bit before the podcast. Make sure to let us know that. Appreciate you guys, as always. That was a better outro than Alex's intro.